there's an unholy alliance between Israel and the far right. But this alliance between Israel and the far right isn't just a threat to Muslims. It is the biggest threat to Jews living peacefully around the world. For some time now, Israel has had a strategic policy of courting the extreme right, the far right, the fascist right in Europe. And it's been going on for so long and it's been done in such a systematic way that it's not an accident. The prospect of the far right coming to power in a serious way in Europe is being treated as a golden opportunity by Israel and its secret services and its Department of Strategic Affairs to influence decision makers at the highest level in Europe. Sometimes Israel goes too far and actually plants an agent in a foreign government. And this was the case of Gideon Marcusar, who was Gerhard Wilder's candidate for deputy prime minister and immigration minister in the Netherlands until the Dutch secret services blocked it over concerns that actually he worked for what they called a foreign intelligence service, but actually what they meant was Mossad. And it's obviously going too far. But they're thinking of the next step of the replacement of the current centrist Liberal Democrat governments in Europe with a new far right, which they would have contacts in each far right government. You know, they're thinking several decades ahead. This is Israel's response to a whole bunch of nations now all joining in and recognizing a Palestinian state. But long before this, Israel has been fostering relations with the extreme right in all of these countries, Gerhard Wilders in the Netherlands, the Spanish Vox Party, the National Rally in France, the extreme right in Germany. Israel has fostered relations with all of them because all of them have taken to Zionism in a big way, not just because they want to shield themselves from their evidently, self-evidently anti-Semitic, anti-Jewish past. Marine Le Pen's father was actually found guilty of anti-Semitism. This is their natural habitat. But it's not just to shield themselves from uh, anti-Semitism. It's because they actually share the same values as Israel does. And Israel, for them, is a model of what a Muslim-free country would actually look like. Israel is a beacon of light in a sea of Islamic darkness. Israel is the canary in the coal mine. If Islam conquers Israel, we will be next. So both Israel and the extreme right and Tommy Robinson in this country use the same argument. They say that Western civilization is at threat from Islam. They don't even actually say now Islamists or Islamization. They just say Islam. It's every Muslim that seems to be a threat to Europe. This is a common analysis which is shared by the so-called intellectuals of the far right. People in the Tory party, people like uh, Suela Braverman, the former Home Secretary, who from the dispatch box invoked the presence of another particularly obnoxious journalist and so-called philosopher of the far right, Douglas Murray. They all say the same thing and they've been saying it for a long, long time. And so the far right and the fascists and our own neoliberal right have a lot in common when it comes to supporting not just the existence of Israel, but the idea of Israel and the idea that it's called the Great Replacement Theory that the indigenous population will be replaced by a non-white population with uh, different values. And it is inherently the idea behind the riots. And you could see it on the streets when they talked about stopping the boats and reclaiming the streets. This is Douglas Murray and Thuela Braverman in action. Stop their boats! Stop their boats! Stop their boats! Stop their boats! Of course, the reaction to the recent riot in Britain by so-called leaders of the Jewish community, and I say so-called because actually they're less and less representative of Jews in Britain. But say the words of the chief rabbi, Mervis, who said the Jewish community in Britain found itself between a rock and a hard place. The rock being the fascist far right, the hard place being the pro-Palestinian left. But really, that isn't good enough because you can't complain that you're stuck between a rock and a hard place when you've been hugging fascists or allowing fascists to attend your demonstrations, as happened outside the Phoenix Cinema in East Finchley, and then complain that you're stuck with this embrace when the fascists reveal themselves to be what they really are, which are thugs. <laughs>
If there is a link between what's happening now and what happened in the 30s, it is in the anti-Jewish propaganda that existed in the 30s that led to the violence and led to the Holocaust, it led to the industrial killing of six million Jews. And the vicious and vile anti-Muslim propaganda that is everywhere on the internet and sometimes breaks out into actually action on our streets. If there is a parallel between what's going on today against Muslims and what went on against Jews in the 1930s, it is that the Jews in the 1930s were the target of massive and widespread socially permitted racism. And the Muslims today occupy the same space. And what is really sad for me personally, my family were refugees, Jewish refugees from Vienna, is that Jews are now taking part in this McCarthyite wave against Muslims. This is not something where you can actually let other people take your voice away from you. You've actually got to say, no, this is not happening in my name. Really, it behoves the Jewish community to dissociate itself from far right and also from Israel and say, no, this is not in our name as increasing number of young and very brave American Jews are doing across the water. In fact, as we all know, Israel's alliance with fascists and Israel's behavior generally is the greatest threat to communal relations and to synagogues and Jewish people living in Britain and in France and elsewhere than anything else. There isn't a religious problem between Jews and Muslims. Israel and the ugly history of Israel and the even uglier present of Israel has deformed that relationship and contorted it and pulled people from their rightful place, which is side by side supporting each other. History shows that Jews and Muslims have always lived together. The one factor that keeps on coming up when there is a horror in Palestine, as there has been for the last 11 months in Gaza. That's when the divisions, that's when the fear, that's when the mutual distrust is being created. But on the ground, the communities, they know that their place is side by side in a fraternal embrace. The greatest threat to Jews around the world is fascists who have a common cause with Israel coming back to power in Europe again. Because once they finished eradicating or trimming down the Muslim community, they will turn on Jews next, as they did in the 1930s. Double Down and organizations like the Middle East Eye are giving you the news that the mainstream media have utterly failed to give you, particularly on Gaza. You read it first here, you don't read it first listening to the BBC or reading The Guardian or reading The New York Times. Support Double Down News on Patreon and read Middle East Eye.